Good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another session of Speak Your Mind. Today, um, ladies and gentlemen, we have some very important topics that I want to discuss with you guys tonight. And I'm hoping that throughout this uh, the session, we can involve you, the public, folks sitting around, sometimes don't want to call. Um, I think you'll like our teasers tonight. Um, they're important enough that they, they, at some point, will affect your life and my life and all of our lives. So uh, I'm asking you guys to, I know there's a lot of you that sometimes say, you know, I just like to look. Um, looking is great sometimes, but it also means that you must be proactive and take part in a discussion because without discussion, we don't know where we're going. So this is a good opportunity for, for you, the listening audience, to really, really like, just give us your feedback. We know the policymakers are, are listening, they're paying attention, they want to hear your concerns. Um, since they are not providing the, uh, the opportunities, um, such as public forums, where you can come and just basically, you know, air your grievance and, and discuss the things that you think that are important to your community, Frequently enough, I mean, they are doing some things, but frequently enough, I believe that we need to have more public uh, discussion, public forums in the community centers um, on a regular basis, so you, the community folks, can can voice your concerns and and basically be ahead of the game, not always reacting to things, but being proactive to those things. So tonight, uh, I wanna I wanna throw out something uh, to you. I wanna. First of all, before we go forward, I want to say um, today we rest a, a really good friend, uh, Supi Stout. Uh, may he rest in peace. Uh, funeral looked like it went off very well. I was in the area and, uh, and, and people really came out in support and I think that's important. So Supi, rest in peace. Um, I just want to recognize him before we go forward. All right, so tonight uh, I want to talk about uh, the visit from the minister from, from London, Mr. Henry Bill, uh, Billingham. He's going to be in the territory, I believe he came in on Saturday, and he's going to be here up until this week. Um, his visit marks a very significant uh, milestone. Uh, I think it's important that we as a community um, should have been given an opportunity to maybe have a public forum with him. Um, you know, in, in, in again in the community while he was here, uh, if, he w if we were able to maybe come and say, hey, you know, some of us who attended the uh, the, uh, the the white paper discussion, um, I know a lot of us had had uh, a point of views on some of the questions that were posed, and we had answers to some of those questions. We were asked to write in, but some of us sometimes are more uh, uh, vocal than we are when it comes to writing things down. And this would have been a golden opportunity for us to meet face to face with the minister. But nonetheless, there is still an opportunity that you can provide information to him um, via the Facebook of the, um, the governor's office. I believe that that um, website has been posted on, on pretty much all the websites the news websites that were promoting his visit. So you can go on uh, Platinum News and the Beacon News and the rest of those newspapers to get the Facebook address. And you can go in there and, and send your questions to, to the minister. And they said he was would be answering those questions. So it's important. Why is it important that this minister is here? There's a number of things that he's going to be doing while he's here. He's having discussion with the premier and the governor. They're going to be talking about things that, again, affects the BVI. They're going to be signing some protocols that relates to financial management, tourism, uh, investment in the country, the environment, all of those things that affect you and I. And it's important that, when, when, again, when these guys are here in town, that we, the public, we, the citizens of the country, have an opportunity to weigh in. So we go, I'm going to elaborate a little bit more on that one. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the things that we should have been able to, to say to him. But if you have uh, comments or, or questions that you think that is important, that you really would like him to know about, um, go, on the, go on the governor's website. It's on there. Uh, I believe it's Facebook slash Her Majesty's Governor or Governor's uh, uh, B in the BVI. Um, dot com and you can you can go in there and, and check out that that Facebook page and post all your questions on there um, in addition to that I want to touch a little bit about tourism and you guys know tourism is is 
main pillar in the BVI. I, I say it's the number one pillar for economical development of this country. Without tourism, this country is dead, no matter how much financial services money comes into this country. Pretty much more than 50%, I don't know exactly the number, I think it's 50 or 60 or 70% of the people in this country, depends on tourism directly and indirectly. Without tourism, again, we are all dead. So it's important that folks, we, 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 we take part in the discussion that relates to tourism. And tourism is all of our business. It ain't just about the government marketing the territory, trying to get more people in the hotel so they can move around the island so the taxi man can make money, so the restaurant owners can make money. It's about all of us taking a, a proactive role in trying to promote tourism in this country. So I want to elaborate on tourism, but most of all, I want to solicit ideas from you, the public, as to how we together can help market and sell the territory. How we can push the information that relates to tourism in this country. How we can utilize those social media websites. A lot of you go on Facebook, you, you're members of TripAdvisor, you, you do a lot of search through Google and Yahoo and you don't realize that you yourself, three, four, five, six, seven thousand people in the BVI constantly blogging and, and logging and searching for uh, a property or a restaurant or something in the BVI creates a buzz on the internet and that buzz will create ranking within a search engine. So therefore, all of a sudden now when anybody from anywhere around the world just type any of those coded words into a search engine, the BVI can easily pop up and that helps a lot. So that's one of the things when the tourist board go abroad, they, they try to touch as many travel agents, as many tour operators, they try to give their information out to as many people, as many subscribers, as many magazines. So a wide range of people can see what the BVI has to offer and where we're located and, and therefore they'll, they'll find an interest to come in vacation in our territory which again helps almost 60 or 70 percent of people in this country. So anybody have their correct uh, statistics on that just call me and let me know. Uh, I think it'd be worth it. So first of all again we want to talk a little bit about Mr. Billingham uh, visit to the territory. Mr. Billingham is the minister for the overseas territories, um, including the BVI. I think uh, recently we, we had a, a white paper discussion on several areas of interest. They had sent us some questions and, or some comments and those questions or comments were geared towards improving the lives in, uh, of the territory, the financial standing of the territory, the environmental of the territory, the tourism sector of the territory, and there goes tourism again. So we're gonna touch that again. Um, so he is now here to, in my, in my judgment, to finalize the discussion. Uh, when you talk about signing protocols, it, it's like saying we, we're at this stage, we were here before, now we're here, and we're getting ready to move forward. So question to you, are you satisfied with the fact that the minister's here and he's here now to discuss um, or sign protocols um, in moving the territory forward. What suggestions you have? We would like to hear you tonight with some of your suggestions as to what we can do as a territory to foster a closer relationship with the UK or if that's what we want or we don't want. Um, we would like to hear what the majority of the people have to say. How we can utilize the UK resources more effectively um, when I say utilize resources, I'm talking about, you know, I, I look at uh, the UK, England as a mother. And I, I would believe that as your mother or as your father, their role, without even having to ask, would be to, you know, find ways to promote the BVI. Uh, or financial services sector, or tourism product, or sports, find ways, continue to find ways uh, to where they can uh, offer as much support as they can for athletes. I mean, we have less than 100 days going to the UK for the Olympics. Uh, you know, I haven't heard much, I haven't heard much from, I guess, from the UK side as to, hey, you know, one of our territories is participating in Olympics and this is what we're doing to help them, you know, um, get on a global stage. So, in my judgment, 
in my view. I don't think that the UK has really given us the type of support, again, if you were looking at it from a nurturing position, as the mother, as the father, obviously those of you who are watching who are parents, you know what it means to take care of your kids. I mean, you have to shelter them, you have to buy clothing, you have to make sure they have food, you have to make sure that they can get to school on time, all of those things. So I haven't really seen those uh, um, action from the UK and I thought that should have been a proactive thing. Um, they shouldn't have to have to send out the white paper to say what do you need? We, you, you know what we need. You know what we, what we, should, what we should have um, in order for us to be more self-sustainable. Um, we probably be looking for a little bit more autonomy. Um, you look at what's happening just this year, January of this year, I think the emission uh, air passenger tax went into to full effect. Um, there's two taxes now coming out of Europe. You have the European tax, you have the, the tax coming out of England um, for passengers coming into the Caribbean or flying long distance. They're, they're faced with an extra tax, an extra burden. Um, that has reduced a lot of the, the folks who would normally would come to the Virgin Islands or even to the Caribbean for a vacation. Uh, is that helping us? I mean, we shouldn't have to lobby England to say, you know, this tax is going to kill a lot of the territories that you're supposed to be protecting and, and fostering and growing. So I'm not, I hope I'm not being too critical, but again, when you look at things and you look at what's happening, you look at, you know, I think their role when it relates to us, being a motherland, being a mother country. Um, we are small territory. I mean, we obviously don't have a lot of resources that they, they have in, in England. Uh, we depend on tourism from those parts of the world. And the tourists who come from there have to fly. And when they fly, I mean, what's happening? You know, they're, they're being told that, yeah, you can go on vacation, but it's going to cost you another $500, another $300, another $200. And when somebody's already made up their mind and paid for the ticket to come to a place like the BVI, where it's already a bit high in, 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 in accommodation, um, they're saying, no, I'm not going to go there. I'll probably go someplace like St. Lucia or St. Kitts or any place where they can get there directly. Um, they'll pay a little extra, and then the hotels probably will will we'll waive a day or two just to, to subsidize the high cost in the tax. So um, again, the, the question is there. How do you guys feel about our relationship? Do you have an answer to some of the questions that were posed recently? Um, were you able to, to submit any of those, those, those answers to those questions? Do you think that this visit to the BVI from Mr. Billingham, is it significant enough that it should have warranted a, a meeting with the community, with the public, uh, a general meeting? I mean, he is our minister. He is the guy who's responsible for making sure that we survive. He, I mean, if you're talking about signing, you know, financial um, um, projection, responsibility, you know, um, paperwork. I mean, he's a guy that's saying, you know, let me make sure that you guys don't go into the red. Well, part of the reason why we're probably going to go into the red is because we can't get people on our territory to spend money. So we don't have to depend on loans and so forth to move the territory forward. So uh, think about that. The phone lines are open, folks. You don't, with me, you don't have to wait. If you have a serious uh, 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 issue that's pressing, it doesn't matter what it is. I'm just throwing out some teasers tonight. My two teasers is the visit with Mr. Billingham and also tourism. I want to elaborate a little bit more on tourism, um, what we can do as a territory, what we can do as a community to help the BVI tours, both to help the government move the country forward. So the phone lines are open. Call me, let me know what's on your mind. Don't wait till the last minute to try to get your comments in because somebody else may have beat you to it. Um, and also when you call, I want to ask everyone, in the interest of time and to help others, um, give others an opportunity to call in. Um, call in, state your position. We're not going to cut you off. You know, tell us what's on your mind, explain your, yourself, and then give someone else an opportunity to call in. Uh, I mean, sometimes I realize that we've been engaging with folks sometimes 10, 15, you know, minutes in one conversation. We want to dialogue with you. We don't mind a five or six minutes, but give others an opportunity.
opportunity to call in. So again, so I, my first teaser is, is the visit um, this week. I, I'm sure, you know, I, I'm, I'm very sure that the folks who are, who are, who are uh, the governor's office, the premier's office, you know, the different uh, minister's office, there's somebody watching and it's giving them a feedback as to what the community is saying. So this is your chance, folks, to call in and tell them what you're, what you're experiencing, what you're going through. So don't hesitate to call. Uh, second thing, again, I want to touch on is tourism. Tourism, folks, to me, is, is probably the most important economical development aspect of this territory. Uh, again, I, I can't emphasize that anymore. Without tourism, we are dead in this country. I mean, and tourism is pretty much everything and anything. It doesn't have to be somebody from outside. It's, it's people, yourself, myself. It's us from inside also. I mean, when you travel around the territory and you visit a restaurant, you go to the supermarket, and you know, on Justin Dyke, if you live in Tortola, you go to the beach, you enjoy a, a, a day out with your family. I mean, that's tourism, that's domestic tourism. And it's important that we continue to do that ourselves. We can help each other by doing those things. You know, tomorrow is Sunday after church, you know, why not? Go to the beach, go down to Quito, go down to Myatt's, you know, give those guys a little support, and then it, it comes back to you, you know what I mean? You go to the movies, that's also tourism, that's domestic tourism, you spend money at the movies, you know, so it's important that we try to stimulate the economy ourselves. Now, question earlier is what can we do as a territory to help develop to help market, to help foster tourism in this country. And I think we could do a lot. I want to hear from you though. I want to know what you think we can do to help. I know, I know a lot of people out there saying, I know what the tourist world could do. I know what the government could do. But what can you do? Because we all can do different things to help. I mentioned earlier Facebook. A lot of you got a Facebook page. You know how you can help utilizing Facebook? Every time you go on Facebook and you're blogging about things that are important to you, but for some people it's like, ah, I don't really want to know about that. Blog about how beautiful the beach was, or how beautiful, uh, what a wonderful time you had at a specific restaurant, and mention their name. Um, talk about your, your travel on the ferry service. Mention the name. All of these things, when you start blogging and creating that buzz, those things get out. It get out to where people who are connected with other people are connecting with other people. They start to see the names and it becomes more familiar. And they start to do more search. When they start doing search in the search engines, that create that type of environment that you need, we all need, so the BVI can always be a, a first, in the first top 10. Um, search and that's how you you don't have to pay for that that could be done even uh, equally right here we can do that ourselves so when you you know you're talking to your friends sometimes when you're just home ain't doing nothing go on Google and just do some search just randomly do some search um, um, BVI Beach Cane Garden Bay BVI Beach Smugglers Cove um, visit the Virgin God of the Bats, visit the Virgin God of Savannah Bay. When you do those things and you get your friends to start doing it, people from around the world, when they start typing in BVI, all of a sudden, all of this type of information will pop up about the BVI. So then the BVI will be on top of the search engines constantly, constantly, constantly. And that's how you create more of an awareness. So we can help. We can help, we can do things ourselves. But I wanna hear again from you folks, don't hesitate, call. I know a lot of you are telling me, oh, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call. I can't speak your mind for you. You have to speak your own mind. Some of you are out there saying, oh, I want you to talk about this, I want you to talk about that. You want me to say what you want to say. I don't mind helping you if I agree with you. But you have to say it first. You have to tell the folks out there who are listening what's bothering you, what's on your mind. What do you want the government to know about your community? Tell me. I mean, it's up to you. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to go to some text while we, while we wait for some of you to call, because I'm going to wait for you guys to call tonight. I've already put out what I'm going to put out. There's a lot of things in the news also. 
that I could touch on, but I, I, I'm trying not to focus on you know negative things in the newspaper, in 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 the, in the online sources or whatever. What well, what I want to focus on is on how we as a country can move forward. Right now we're coming up on a slow season. Cruise ships are going away. Some of you that don't like cruise ship, guess what? Without cruise ship right now, you don't put a ship in this country. Guess what happened? It's dead. The country is dead. Land base is dead. It's so quiet. The high-end resorts, they're doing good. They're doing good because they have a niche. They have a, a, a people who can afford seven, eight hundred dollars a night, and they'll come because they're getting a certain ambiance, and they don't care what it takes, what it costs. They're going to pay for it. But the country is dead, and we need to find a way to stimulate the country ourselves. We could do that, folks. It takes all of us. So think about it. Another thing that's bothering me in the tourism industry here, and I think that's something that needs to be looked into. I think one of the things that we can do, or the country can do, or the government can do, is to find a way to where we can get folks from stop staying on these boats. For example, at the Morris and Sunset and so forth. I'll come back to that in a minute. Let me get to the phone. You want to speak your mind? Go ahead, please. Hello. You want to speak your mind? You're live. Go ahead. All right, we'll come back to that, folks. We'll come back to them. If, if I missed your call, just call back. Um, I was just saying, you know, it, it's been a habit. It's been a practice. Um, you know, sailing is a big thing in this country, and it's very important to our, to our tourism sector in this country. So I'm not here to bash the sailing world. I'm not here to bash the sailing company. But I think everybody has to understand what is their role. We have a lot of people that come in, and they stay in a lot of these sailing boats. Before they, they sail and after they sail, they sleep on the boat. A, if this, if this is still happening, I think the government really needs to be collecting money from this if they're not collecting, and if they are collecting, they need to start collecting more money. I think B, whatever we can do to change that culture, to get people in the hotels, not sleeping on boats. Get them to start sleeping in the hotels. And I know there's gonna be some challenge because somebody's gonna say, well, there's not enough hotel rooms. I got a solution for that. But folks, we're gonna take a break real quick and I'll be right back.